Okay, so I'm going to talk about Mars. Um, there was a post that one of my friends made, uh, the High Priestess 11, um, and it was about Mars. And I commented something about people being there, and people were like, ooh, we want to hear the story. And um, it came up a few times, and it's something that I know I've wanted to to talk about, but it's not something I like to talk about. Uh, and there are reasons. Um, first thing I'll say is this is probably going to be a longer video, and uh, it could trigger past life memories if you have past lives on that timeline that I'm going to talk about. And uh, they they may not be the most pleasant, um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, if you intuitively feel like you shouldn't watch this video, then don't watch it. Um, but uh, I'm going to start with, um, I guess I'll start from the beginning. I kind of talk about it in my, my ET book, my first one, uh, that I worked with an Arcturian for quite a while learning how to travel between worlds. Um, and when I say worlds, I mean planets and going back and forth and meeting different beings. And one of the weird things was that as we traveled, they would not let me in our solar system. Um, they kept me locked away so that I could go up towards like the moon, but I wasn't allowed on the backside. Um, I was never allowed to see the back. And then I was never allowed to travel beyond Earth, essentially unless I took a wormhole to another world. And when I say wormhole, for those of you don't, who don't know, your third eye is a wormhole, a portal to other worlds where you, your spiritual energy, um, your light body can access and zip off to different places. But to do that, you have to learn how to do it. You have to um, basically take baby steps and train yourself to be able to focus and to be able to hold yourself in place and energetically strengthen your ability to travel and then um, over time you uh, are able to do it longer for more period you know uh, for longer durations and, and go farther and go to different places and some places are energetically um you need to be energetically strong to be able to handle the energy of the the celestial bodies and things that are around because there's so much higher vibrational. So the master, as I call him, the Arcturian, they took me to a world I've worked with for a long time. Um, I call it the home world. It's a place that I've been to time and time again. Feels like home to me. And uh, they started teaching me how to jump from planet to planet, opening wormholes. Uh, they downloaded star maps uh, one day, and that unfolded, and I now have a carousel of planets I can spin through. And um, when it stops, I can zip off to that planet, the wormhole opens, and I know exactly where it is in space-time and can get to it. So I asked them uh, at one point, you know, what about our solar system? I wanted to see stuff. I've always been fascinated with Saturn. Uh, I know there's stuff around Saturn and different places, Mars being one of them. And they were like, it's not time. You're not ready. I'm like, okay. So we did the jumping. We did planets. We did moons. They explained to me a bunch of different things about moons and the, the mega structures that uh, a lot of moons are. Uh, not that ours is one. I know what I've been told, but um, there are a lot of moons that are, are artificial. And then one day he came and they were like, uh, okay, we're going to take you someplace. And I dropped to the home world and we popped around different planets. And I popped out at Mars when he opened a another wormhole because we would jump we would I would jump to this Arcturian world and then he would open up a wormhole of his own and we would jump through that to wherever he wanted to take me um, as I built strength because I was able 
to connect very easily to this one planet I had worked with uh, for a long time because it's a place I've uh, essentially come from in some sense. And then he would open a, open somewhere that would take me elsewhere, um, which was makes it easier. Um, now, excuse me. Nowadays, I can jump directly to places really, really far away without doing intermediate jumps. But in the beginning, we had to do. It's like you you ping, um, you kind of bounce. If anybody's ever seen Guardians of the Galaxy, where they have uh, they have these like um, areas that they they jump through to get to a place far away and they just keep jumping through it's kind of like that you go to you go to one planet and then you open up a wormhole and you go to another and then you open up a wormhole to get to somewhere really 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 far away um, until you build the strength and the skill to to focus and actually do it at, in one straight one one fell swoop so I pop out at Mars and I'm like, oh, cool, we're, we're, we're at Mars, you know, this is, this is fascinating, um, I'm loving this type of thing, and he goes, yeah, but, uh, we're gonna go down, and I'm like, oh, because, um, at this point in time, they controlled whether I went down to a planet, and a lot of times, um, like Nibiru, uh, Nibiru exists, um, at least what I think is Nibiru and what they've told me, and that's a place that they took me where they would not let me down on the surface. I was just allowed to see it, know that it was there. Off I went and we kept going. Um, and there are different places I've seen where they're like, here's this place. You're not ready yet. We'll, we'll come back to it. Um, and this is two years ago when I was doing, doing a lot of learning. And so Mars comes up and I feel a pull down to this place underneath one of the caps. Now I don't know which cap it is. Uh, Mars has two ice caps, uh, one on you know the south and the north pole, and I don't I have no idea which one it is. I just know that there was a cap, a pole, and he goes, "We're gonna go down," and we shoot down to the planet, and that's more instantaneous, um, in the sense that you don't open a wormhole, you don't have to do anything. You just boom click you're there um kind of like if you learn how to travel the earth uh consciously you just close your eyes and you're you're there within a millisecond you don't have to actually go through anything um and as you're building skills with wormholes and uh astral travel that becomes a thing where the more focused and capable you are the quicker and faster you can travel even further distances to other planets and, and that sort of thing without without even meditating um so i drop down and we end up going through the surface by one of the poles and i'm like what the heck's going on and we drop in and we're in this um i don't know we're in this the, the word i use is bunker um it's not a bunker it's the only word i i know to describe it it's an under underground um, facility of some sort that is basically a city uh, but it doesn't look like a city because it's underground and there's technology everywhere it's very pristinely clean uh, white walls super super clean um, high technology and there are people walking around everywhere and I'm, I'm standing there with this Arturian master and we're astral traveling so we're consciously there we're not physically there we're just kind of standing there as our energy watching what everybody's doing and what's happening and as people are walking somebody actually turns looks directly at me and i hear i think i, I heard them say hello or something and it's been a long time but i was shocked because that was the first time it had happened um and this was one of my first human experiences outside of earth um with being with humans on other planets and i turned to the master and i was like they first of all i was like first of all these are humans and he goes yeah and i'm like no no what, these are humans on mars like what the hell like they're here they're on mars and he goes yeah they've been here for a really long time 
and I go, okay, um, you know, it's a, it's a shock to see, but I know what I've felt and known over the years, knowing the, um, you know, cons- quote unquote conspiracy theories about Mars and, and my feelings were that there's always been civilization there at some point, but they're still there. And then it was shocking for a physical human to turn to me and acknowledge my presence and then turn and keep walking. And the master was pretty much, okay, we're done. We went back up into space. And he goes, you're going to come back here. We want you to come back here. We want you to talk to them. And I go, okay, Um, you know, is what it is. And time goes by. We do a lot more stuff. I forget that. You know, I don't forget that it happens, but it kind of falls to the wayside because there's so many places and beings and things that I've experienced that um, you you kind of, rem- it's one of those things like it's in the back of your mind, but you just don't remember until it happens again. So then I get pinged later on and I get pulled out towards this red planet, a reddish planet, and I'm like, what the hell? And there's a, I get pulled down and... I end up in this um, very small, uh, I guess you'd call it an apartment. And again, white walls, pristinely clean. um, Something you'd see in a science fiction movie as far as uh, pristine, beautiful, sleek furniture. uh, Not a lot of accessories. Actually, I I don't, I think there was like one wall hanging and most of the, most of it was just, you know, it's not like walking into our houses with stuff on the walls and shelving and books and all that. It's just very, very bare, uh, minimalist. That's the word I'm looking for, minimalist. And there's a guy sitting on what is basically a couch or a bench. And there's a, um, at one point I turned around and I don't know if it was the first experience or not, but I turn around and there is a, um, uh, not a TV, um, but maybe, maybe like a holographic or a projection of film or something going on that it's basically a TV, but there's, I don't, I don't think there was actually a monitor. It was like on the wall or something, you know, more advanced technology. And we start talking, and I realize he's the one that saw me, and we're talking because he's interested. Now, at the time, he uh, pinged me right around the time that NASA was about to land the rover with the helicopter. Now, the one thing that I have to say here in that I've never, first of all, I don't trust NASA. Um, very clear about that in, in a lot of my stuff. Uh, it's not the people in NASA. It's not the engineers. It's not the scientists. It's the, those in control. And it's, um, you know, uh, uh, I forget, I'm blanking on the term, but compartmentalizing information uh, where you only tell people what they need to know to do their job but you never in our history have two things happened right right around the same time Um, and and I shouldn't say never in our history it happens all the time they just lie about it Um, the rover was sent up with a helicopter which is a multi-million dollar project called a test um and we we need to test things let's be clear about that but we also have the ability to test things mathematically uh without actually taking them to another planet um you know because we have the math we can figure it out and test them and obviously gravity and, and that sort of thing work differently. But uh, 
I've never believed in the idea of if they say they spent millions and millions of dollars and months to send something somewhere that it's a test. Um, and they said it's a test. Um, I've always thought the helicopter was for something else and that they just weren't telling us. And I, and I still believe that. Um, so they were sending this helicopter up and around the same time they announced the test of a multi-million dollar project, which was a satellite that they were going to smash into uh, an asteroid to see if it would deflect the asteroid. That's a fascinating project because um, they literally posted it on their, their website and it was, we're going to build a multi-million dollar satellite and smash it into a, an asteroid to see if it will divert the asteroid. Now, anybody that knows, I mean, this is, this is <laughs> just 101. It's, if you've ever seen Armageddon, it's a very true statement. If you take, uh, you know, something and explode it, like a firecracker and explode it against your hand, it just burns you. But if you put it inside, it blows it up. Um, and when it comes to an asteroid, if you smash something, like we're not gonna spend millions of dollars to smash a high-tech piece of equipment just to destroy it and see if it deflects the asteroid. Um, that never felt right to me. Uh, and it happened at the same time, around the same time, um, or shortly after last year with the uh, the helicopter landing. So I don't know what they're doing. Um, I just know that I don't I don't think and I don't feel that everything is um, truthful than when it comes to them. And I um, when you read some of the stuff, it's like we would never do that. We would never spend this time and money just for a test just to destroy something just to land something and hope it works there's there's always a mission there's always a goal there's always a you know a quid pro quo uh you know we're gonna land a copter because we're not we're not landing a helicopter on mars just to test it and fly it around and make sure it works we're there there's a there's a they're looking for something they're they either found something or they're looking for something um, and so, and again, people in government, people in these organizations, NASA, all that don't necessarily know what's going on. They just know they're told to build a helicopter and this is what we're doing. And then it's the people behind the scenes that are, you know, compartmentalizing information and figuring it out. So, uh, I go down to Mars and... I'm talking to Pidlola, and I think I'm saying his name right, Pid, Pid, Pidilola, Pidilola, Pidilola. I'm going to call him P. Uh, some of the names of ETs, um, and even ET humans, are not the easiest to say, uh, so I nickname them just with their abbreviations or something else that they tell me to call them, uh, so we'll call him P for now. He's down there, and he's like... He's talking to me and he says, you know, they've, they've been in the bunker um, for a very long time. Uh, they went down there during um, uh, an event that happened on the surface. Uh, and I don't remember if he told me what happened. I'd have to go back through my notes and things. And I haven't I haven't written the entire story. Yet. There's, I'm working on a, a project where I talk about ET humans um, and... I think in the first book, I only say that he exists, basically, that they're there and they exist. So he's talking to me, he's telling me, you know, they have high technology, we're sitting in the apartment, I'm like, how, how do you have television? Like, I'm, I'm watch, there's, there's movies and stuff. I mean, he, I think he was actually watching football, if I remember right. <laughs> and um, he says that they scan the signals from Earth and use the signals and they can transfer them into their own entertainment um, technology, which was fascinating uh, because they actually know, they see a lot of the stuff that's going on here. And their uh, societal structure controls information in a, in a way not to spread fear, but it's also not controlled the way ours controls it um, they know we're here they know we send stuff um, and 
all they know is that a rover had landed and there was going to be a helicopter um there was a helicopter or something on it and they, he wanted to know more uh so my his question to me was can you research this and what give us give us give me updates He's, he, he goes you know they don't tell me they don't tell us things they just tell us that there's you guys are sending stuff here and it's landing and doing stuff and we have no idea what it's doing but we're interested and we want to know more um and my feeling is that they are not told specifics because of what happened which i'll get to um and so i go on and i start monitoring the the updates and watching the tests and you know the helicopter went this far and it did this and it did that and the whole time i'm just like this this is a joke uh and a joke being that we never um do multi-million dollar stuff like this just for just to test it because every time it's like oh we ran a test we ran a test i'm like there's there's a goal there's a motive there's a there's, there's something going on um and because we that technology we know works um and it's not about testing the environment it's we, we look the automation we have is already far ahead of where it needs to be to do this type of thing so i start relaying to him like oh you know it made it this far it's in this area it's doing this it's doing that um i go one day and there's uh, another person there um i want to say i'm bad with ages with children uh, because they uh some kids you know they, they're 10 years old they look like they're five and they're 10 years old and then they look like they're 15 uh, but i want to say he was like 10 years old and it was p's nephew i believe and he was watching him and uh the kid <laughs> i'll never forget it he and p and i are talking remember i'm astral traveling so i'm energy i'm energy and we're talking and the kid can see me too and they're they're very awake up there at least this this family is um and the kid turns to me and he says I ret returns the P and he says, um, what, what is it? He said, why are humans so stupid? And P's like, don't say that's, that's not, you know, that's kind of offensive. Don't say that. <laughs> and he's like, no, but seriously, why are humans so stupid? And he's like, what, what are you talking about? Don't, that's not appropriate. You know, you're, you're, you're being, um, uh, kind of mean in the way he was saying it and the kids like no they know we're here why don't they just come and I, I went he's not wrong <laughs> like uh, from what I understand and what I've been told is that elements on earth know they exist know they're there but we're sending these tests and doing this foolish stuff to slowly um, get to to slowly be where we need to be and truthfully I think we're far far past that uh, I think it's a lot of PR stuff um, to, to keep the truth away from people but uh, the kid said that and I, I i laugh because every time i think about it i was like you know it, of course a kid says it you know you know p and i are thinking the same thing um i'm talking to him and of course the kid says it so there's um basically there's a a big uh underground installation and it's it's beautiful um it's absolutely beautiful uh he works in you i guess you could call it food management I, I don't know uh he's they they do uh essentially hydroponics but on a much more advanced scale and there are areas down there where they grow the food he's a farmer um oh, that's, that's a better word i should have just used that <laughs> he's a farmer a technological farmer you know hydroponics aquaponics that sort of thing and they grow all their food it's all vegetables um, they don't i don't believe they eat any meat it's all plant plants and um 
they also have um, enormous gardens um, and rooms that just have trees and things, but it's all in the installation and the um, technologically enclosed, so there's no sunlight. It's there is uh, mimicked sunlight with panels and things on the ceilings and um, uh, just beautiful beautiful people down there and so that's kind of an overview of what's there now here's the why and this is the part I don't like talking about because it um, it's very difficult um, I remember many of my past lives. I don't remember them in full, as in remembering everything. I remember the important events, important pieces, people I've met, people I've been around, uh, and it, the destruction of Atlantis is one. I've remembered that since I was, I think I had that memory when I was like 19, come, come through because I was studying Atlantis a lot. And then Mars happened about a year. Actually, it'd be almost a year to date, um, probably within a week, uh, because I it happened about a week after I left my ex, um, and that was the first week of July sometime. And uh, that memory of that life brought me so much pain um, like I, I am I'm trying to talk without letting it affect me now um, but it brought so much pain that I uh, in, in that life I collapsed to my knees I was on a ship and um, I had I saw what happened and I collapsed to my knees going, they actually did it. I can't believe they did it. Why did they do it? This is just horrible. Uh, and it affected me for days here to where I would just break down crying for days um, randomly. Uh, and luckily I was at my parents in their basement. Um, I, had, I had moved in to uh, find a new place. And um, so I was in hermit mode and nobody really knew what was going on and I was able to process or kind of process what had happened. But my guides opened up a lot of information to me uh, because of the work I needed to do and I needed to work more with P um, around the same time was when we were doing the, we were doing more of the uh, helicopter work. I think that was July through September or something, and then um, we 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 stopped because of some things going on in my life, um, and we're still tele we still telepathically communicate. And when I go to write the book, we're going to talk more. But um, we we kind of stopped when we realized like this helicopter is a, a joke. Um, even even he was like, "This is this." I was like, "Yeah, it's." <laughs> Literally, the updates are, oh, we, we flew it 150 feet. We flew it 100 feet. Like, just nothing, um, really. And, and we know there's a, a hidden motive. So this information all rushes me, overpowers me. Um, I remember this life where, just like Atlantis, and, and when Atlantis was destroyed, I was on... Um, some sort of flying vessel that was open um, and there were only it might have just been me it might have been a few other people um, but some sort of not a plane but like a solo plane or a family plane of some sort that was highly advanced technologically or even maybe in some sort of ET technology at the time and I watched Atlantis get destroyed. Um, Mars, the same thing kind of happened. Um, but I was on a ship uh, watching from out from above the planet, watching 
and I could see through the viewport uh, all these other ships, all kinds of other ships, almost like a war was going on. And one of the one of the theories out there, or I should say hypotheses, because there it's not really a theory. Um, uh, well, I guess it is a theory when you consider the the information that I have and experience I have is that um, there was a war between Earth and Mars. I believe there was. Um, I was on that ship. I had been, I have fought for thousands and thousands of years in almost every life that I remember on this planet against the use of weapons, against the use of fear, um, aggression. Uh, every life I can remember is steals something with that um, and it has always been to help humans raise their vibration and get to a better place and we have um, me and my brothers and sisters who are here today have done this for time and time again and um, it's utterly exhausting uh, we have watched it fail several cycles uh, several cycles it has failed we haven't had um, you know, there's a, there's a good Dolores Cannon video about we've done this many times and we've never had the critical mass to make the change. Um, and each time has been very destructive. Um, the memory was me on a ship and I felt like I had been fighting with people to, and I don't mean fighting like aggressively or with weapons or anything, I had been fighting for peace and freedom and love and light and trying to get whoever these people were on these other ships to not do what they were going to do. Um, I don't know much else. What I do know is that Mars was there. Um, there was water and um, tree, like it looked like a planet from space, like a living planet from space. A beam of energy went down from somewhere behind my ship, wherever I was. And I don't know if the beam of energy was me experiencing seeing the energy of something um, because we're all energy, and sometimes in astral states, you can see things differently. It was either a beam of energy or some type of highly advanced missile. Went down, hit the planet, poof, no more planet. Um, basically an enormous um, explosion and like Hiroshima, Nagasaki, but imagine planet-wide. Um, I've always thought the one crater on Mars even though they're like, oh, it was an asteroid impact. I've always thought that was bullshit. Um, I've always thought it was a weapon that hit and wiped everything out. Um, the, the way I knew it was true is when it happened, it brought me to my knees. I started crying, and I was just in enormous amounts of pain and loss and grief. Um, and then it affected me for days and even talking about it now I'm holding back the the emotions as I'm trying to replay the the memories in my head so that I can process this video um, it's just not a fun memory and because I know it's happened before uh, because humans are very have been very vicious and it's not the first time uh, it wasn't Mars wasn't the first time and it wasn't the last time and um, it's also why when we started nuclear weapons technology back in the 40s um, incidences of ETs and things really ramped up because they realized it's, it has a chance to happen again only on a self-destructive scale not on a scale of destroying another world and those weapons also quantum entanglement when you have a high energy weapon of some some sort like that even just a, even like a nuclear bomb 
uh, they affect other dimensions and other worlds when they are used. So the idea that only Hiroshima and Nagasaki were affected, and even in the testing of those weapons, excuse me, um, there's much more that happens in on a universal scale, which is why uh, they talk about like, oh, hey, the ships go and shut down nuclear silos. They go and take over the controls and turn them all off. And, um, you know, there's a lot of sightings around nuclear sites for that reason, because they're basically saying, we're not letting you do this. Um, and trying to make sure the timeline stays positive and the highest it can be in raising people up because many people like me are actually ET souls who have been here for going through the cycles over and over again trying to trying to raise the consciousness of this planet and my feeling is this is basically like the last straw this is the you know this is the time we're gonna do it and we're gonna the, the whole freaking um, galaxy, uh, Milky Way galaxy is sent millions of souls and even, th you know, outside souls that aren't incarnated here and trying to just be like, we're done with this. We're going to make this work. You know, this isn't happening again. Um, so Mars was destroyed by another civilization who attacked them and they knew they were coming and in knowing they were coming they built really advanced bunkers like I said I call them bunkers they're not really bunkers um, really advanced uh, you know underground civilizations and they're still living there and I know they're at one of the poles because P described, like, I was like, well, how do you get your water? And he, they siphon it from uh, the ice and reuse, and they have technology to reuse it, so they don't really need a lot. They just pull what they need and, you know, filter it and everything else. And so they knew we were coming, and I say we meaning humans, because um, I don't know 100% accuracy that it was humans from earth but I'm pretty sure and for whatever reason they went and they set off a weapon and poof um, within you know a couple beats of a heart the entire planet was decimated but they were able to get enough people underground to continue living and they've been living in that state waiting for humans to return which is one of the reasons the kids said the thing about why don't they just come because they don't have the resources to reclaim the surface without our help and it is our karmic obligation as humans to go back to Mars and fix and right the planet and terraform it and uh, basically make it to where they can retake the planet um, and come, come to the surface and, and all that. Um, and I can feel P checking in as I'm talking here all of a sudden um, because I know they've wanted me to talk about this for a while. But and I can just see him smiling and saying, good job, we're, we're finally talking about it. Um, but uh, the, the whole purpose for humans going to Mars, people are like, oh, it's to leave Earth. I mean, it, it is. It's to leave Earth. It's to colonize another planet. It's to expand resources. There's always a, you know, exterior, ulterior motivation. Um, always another motivation. But it's karmically a karmic debt that humanity has to pay to right what they did. Um, I don't know why they did it. I don't know who started it. Um, Mars might have started it. Earth might have started it. It might have been like 99.99999% of war where some 
third party does something stupid that nobody understands and two you know groups end up fighting each other because they don't want to sit down and actually talk about what the hell's going on um, and that's the problem with most wars is that people don't want to fight they're just unwilling to sit down and talk about why are we fighting like what's going on and so um, they're there uh, Mars isn't the only one inhabited in our solar system. Um, there are other places, and uh, but as far as I know, Mars is the one that was destroyed, at least on the, the timeline that I remember, um, which I believe is the timeline most of us are on right now. Um, I, I think it was a fixed event, a fixed karmic event, and um, it's the duty of humanity to go back restore the planet and fix it and write it but they're also not going to tell you this at least not for a while uh, because they don't want people knowing that there are people on mars um, and not only are there people on mars i also think there are actually like earth people already on mars um, but that's a completely different topic altogether. Um, but it's also why organizations, I, I know everybody is like, everybody gives these organizations so much flack, um, whether it's um, all these different private space companies. It's also why we need them, um, regardless of how you feel about the leadership, about the uh, some of the goals because some of the motives are for mining which is the whole crashing a spaceship into an asteroid I always I've always felt they were just launching something up there to crawl around the asteroid and look at minerals or maybe even land um, land technology up there to, to, to pull something off of it but there is motivations for corporations to go into space and its resources I mean one asteroid can is like trillions of worth trillions of dollars there is motivations but we also need them because the publicly controlled side is not publicly controlled um, and it's very uh, manipulated and uh, even from a technological standpoint, there's not much advancement. It's the private companies that advance things uh, because they have, they have the money and the backing and the investors and, and all of that. At the same time, we have to change the way that operates so that private companies are not working for the interests of investors, that they are working for the interests of society. Um, and that's a completely another topic and situation. But the whole point is without these companies going into space, a couple things aren't going to happen. One, this, the only reason I believe disclosure is happening, and this is the only reason I think it's happening, private companies are sending people into space. That's it. Um, if it wasn't for that, the government wouldn't be talking about it um, because they have no benefit. To, there's no gain for them to talk about it other than we're in an age where private companies are sending people up. And guess what? They're going to see stuff, um, especially if they start taking them around the moon because there's stuff on the other side of the moon. Um, and it is not hidden. Uh, it is fly around it is there <laughs> um, especially if you get close even on the front side there's stuff on the on the front side you see the pictures of the moon and ships kind of going in and out of it they're going into bays and different things on the moon um, so that is why we need those private companies that is why we need the Elons of the world who are, hey, let's get us to Mars. Um, 
out of that comes technology, out of that comes pro technological pro progress, regardless of what you think about the focuses of Earth. We need to do everything. We need to right the world, but we also need to get to space. And we also need to karmically balance the scales and fix the issues that the history of this world has caused in the solar system and in other places. And there are other humans out there, not just Mars. There are planets outside of our solar system with humans waiting for us to do these things, to be able to interact with us and trade resources, tourism. One of the big things is tourism. I've, I've talked to a couple that they're just, I mean, they just want to come to Earth because it's beautiful. Some of these planets are like not pretty. Uh, if you think of Star Wars and Tatooine and these different places, I mean, the civilizations like that exist on in harsh worlds. Um, but if they are able to open trade and relations and we can gain technology, we can gain tourism, we can gain, you know, uh, galactic connections uh, with other physical three-dimensional beings who are also multi-dimensional and consciously aware that peace and prosperity and love are the ways of the universe and they're not going to come and take things over um, so there are lots of humans out there but there's a karmic debt between earth and mars and uh, it needs to be it needs to be fixed um, and we are going to learn more uh, I just don't know I don't know how it comes out um, NASA scrubs images that's a it's a very well-known well-known thing well documented um, you know people who used to work there have come out and said you know that that was their job was scrubbing images and I don't know when they're actually going to say hey we used to live there the the faces of Mars the pyramidal stru pyramid like structures of the you know all these different things are actually structures that survived uh, because they were made of um, stone like I mean you think of how the pyramid is made, the Great Pyramid's made today with those stone blocks, a, a destructive wave of dust and debris is gonna cause some damage, but it's not necessarily gonna wipe it from existence. Um, so I don't know when it comes out that this all happens, but it will come out. And the point, oh, we're already at 50 minutes. Um, I gotta try to wrap this up. Uh, the point is they're there if you can astral travel um, you might be able to telepathically reach out and talk to some of them uh, they're very friendly they're peaceful uh, they're they're really just intent on coming back to the surface and they're hiding right now because they don't want humans to know they're there because humans are the ones that wiped them wiped the surface out but at the same time they know they can't retake the surface without Earth coming back to help them reclaim the surface. And that's part of the debt that needs to be paid is that we have to build the technology to go and reclaim and then find the doorways to their living areas, essentially. And, you know, the whole idea of terraforming is that if we did it, we would have to siphon uh, the water from the ice caps, which would uh, pull the ice away from the ice caps, shrink them, and that's when we're going to start being like, oh, hey, there's doorways, there's other stuff underneath, there's things that have been preserved, um, but they are there and uh, yeah I might I might just be rambling at this point on this video just know that they're there they're there that's that's all you need to know and not to trust what some of these 
other organizations say and use your intuition if you can astral travel try to try to ping the planet see if you get a response you might um that's what i did i i went and i got a response and then somebody invited me into their part their what's basically an apartment and built a built a friendship with them but i hope that answers everybody's questions people on mars there was a war we have a karmic debt um, if you have any questions let me know and i'll clarify things uh, and I'll try to do it in a shorter video. I knew this was going to be a long video, and hopefully I didn't ramble too much, but thank you for watching.